So you are creating a copilot within Microsoft Copilot Studio and you need to create an entity. Now entities and variables might be confusing in concept. I know especially at first for me they were, but actually creating them is pretty simple once you understand what they are. So real quick, entities, if you're unaware, are really just the parameters or the expectations Copilot needs to have when trying to capture information. So what does that mean? The entity is what defines what a phone number looks like, as in three digits followed by hyphen followed by four digits. In our example, in our coffee Copilot, it's gonna define the different types of coffee sizes that our company offers, small, medium, and large. The entity is saying, hey, Copilot, when the time comes and somebody provides this, this is what that is. The entity sets what that is. And the entity ultimately defines the type of data that is going to be stored in the variable. We are not talking about variables as a part of this video. There will be a video to that one on the channel linked at the end of this video. So one last thing is that entities are outside of your variables and your topics. When you create an entity for your Copilot bot, it can be used throughout the entire bot. It can be used for multiple variables, it can be used in multiple topics. And there are actually two different ways currently that you can create entities within your Copilot bot. And in this video, I'm gonna actually show you how to create an entity using both methods. Now, here is my custom coffee Copilot, and this is brand new. I've done some very, very minor things. I have not created any variables. I have not created any entities as a part of this. Now. On this screen, you will likely see a settings button in the top right hand side. If you do not see that, go ahead and select the three dots. Sometimes if your window is a little too small, it will bump this settings button into the three dots, but you wanna go ahead and navigate to settings. And under settings, you'll see that there's kind of this entities tab. And here you can see we have a bunch of pre-built entities that come automatic with every co-pilot and custom co-pilot that you spin up. Now, these are gonna be things like emails, events, dates, countries, colors, ages, um, there's a person's name, a phone number. Make sure if there is a entity you're looking to create that you are not replicating an out of the box one. I find that these generally cover a lot of scenarios, but kind of like I shared, we are wanting to create a coffee size or a coffee cup size entity. So to create an entity from the settings, you're going ahead, you're going to go ahead and select add an entity and new entity. And this is going to show you the two different options currently available for creating entities. There's a closed list, which is effectively a multiple choice option. And then there's a regular expression. This is kind of defining what certain numbers or IDs will look like, the sequence of numbers that they might follow. That way, when somebody shares a KB123456, Copilot understands, oh, this is an article ID. Now, in our examples today, we're gonna to be creating some closed list options. Now, obviously, you'll need to name your entity. I'm gonna go ahead and name mine coffee size. Now, the description is very important because this is actually telling Copilot what this entity is defining. What is it finding? What are the sort of things that customers will say that need to point Copilot in the, in the direction of, oh, they are talking about coffee size right now. And you can use natural language when you use this. I would say something along the lines of, this is the t size of cup that somebody is looking to order with their coffee, or this could be the amount of coffee that someone is looking to purchase. Something along those lines, if you wanna include both sentences like that, you absolutely can. So for me, in my scenario, I'm saying this is the selection of coffee cup size, and this refers to how much coffee a customer would like to purchase or drink. Now, one last thing before I get to the list items, you'll notice this smart matching option. I go ahead and turn this on. The smart matching really just enables the ability for the natural language, the large language model to understand misspellings, grammar issues. So in our example, we're going to have three options, small, medium, and large. If someone were to misspell the word medium, we still wanted to understand that medium is the option that should be set. So for the list items here, these are the options that you actually want as a part of your entity. And in our scenario, we want small, medium, and large. Let's say we only offer 
three different types of coffee sizes and I can go ahead and type that and select enter. Now you'll see here that this pops up the synonyms window. And so this is where you can actually add synonyms to the small option. Now, how is this different than typos? Well, let's say that I'm asked a question, what sort of coffee do you like? If I were to say, just respond with the letter S, you know, we want it to under, we want Copilot to understand that when I say the letter S, I'm talking about small. Maybe I say extra small. Maybe I just say, give me the smallest size that you have. These are synonyms that would point Copilot to the option of small. If you wanna add synonyms, you go ahead and select synonyms here and begin typing them and making sure you select the add button here and that they show up in the list. And then when you click done, you'll see them pop up back over here. So I have added in some synonyms for our options and now our entity is created and good to go. Let me go ahead and select save. Now this is going to be saving your custom entity and after a couple seconds, then you will see a green entity saved at message at the top of your screen. And you'll also see that it shows up in the list of entities kind of in the screen behind this window. Now, like I said, this is the first way and honestly the most simple way to create entities. Now, how does this apply? Let me go ahead and show you the, the second way to create entities. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to our coffee topic. This is brand new, there's nothing in here just besides the trigger phrase of coffee. Now, you can actually create entities through the ask a question conversation node. And let's say this is the question where we're gonna ask what size coffee would you want? Under this identify, you will see that it's currently set to multiple choice options. This is the entity that we wanna use to define the parameters of the inputs of this question. I hope this is making sense, but you can see here that within these options, we have the coffee size entity that we just created. And now if I show this, it'll, it shows you the options that we have available. Let me go ahead and check those. Now, what I'm doing there when I check that is I'm actually creating what are called quick replies. We are gonna talk about quick replies at the end of this video. I think they're a super cool little win for business value ads, but I don't wanna get ahead of myself. Now you can actually create entities directly from this screen from within a topic. Now, let me go ahead and ask another question. Let's say on top of coffee size, we need to understand the coffee type. Do they want a light roast, a medium roast, or a dark roast? And those three options are not something that's pre-built already in an entity. So we need to create a second custom entity. If I select under the identity, identify here, you can see there's the create an entity button. And this opens up the exact same pop-up window from before. We're gonna build out a close list option set. We are looking to create the coffee type entity. I'm gonna go ahead and just create that now and skip the boring stuff. So here I have my coffee type entity all filled in just to read the description to continue to hammer home what the description is for. I have the, coffee, the type of coffee a customer is looking for and the roast is determined by the strength, flavor, and color of the coffee. This way, if someone's talking about the strength, flavor, or color, it can hint at, hey, we're probably talking about coffee type here. Now, let's go ahead and save this entity as well. Now, here we have our two questions. Let me go ahead and save our topic and just show you how this is gonna work in the test window here. If I give this a refresh to make sure we are up to date, let me go ahead and trigger our coffee topic you'll see what size coffee would you like? And here are the quick replies that I was talking about. These are just buttons. Instead of having to type out, I want a small coffee as an end user, it might be in certain scenarios, super beneficial to utilize these buttons. They can help standardize the inputs and different things, especially if your co-pilot is doing more complex stuff than figuring out someone's coffee order. So say I wanted a medium coffee, I can select that button. and. Here you'll see that I don't have any quick replies, so there's there's no buttons. These are, again, just simple clicks that you can do. And entities truly are kind of the foundation of your bot and understanding how you wanna capture information and the information that you wanna capture. If you are wanting to see how entities now apply to variables and how to create variables, troubleshoot variable issues, you are gonna to wanna to check out this video here. Thank you to you for seeing the end of the video. My name is Griffin Lickfeld, the host of the Citizen Developer channel. I'm excited to connect with you in the next one.